Bachbinder bits are very useful because they do two things at once. They cut a perfect 45 degree bevel and they create a mechanical joint that is not only much stronger than glue alone, but it makes it easier to clamp your corners together as you glue them up. Lockminders are used in boxes and frames to create hollow posts and in many other creative ways. But a lot of folks are afraid of lockminder bits because they have a reputation for being a pain to set up. YouTube is full of promises to help you set one up quickly that then proceed to way overcomplicate things. It doesn't have to be that difficult. In this video, I'll show you the simple way to set up any lock miter bit without special tools. First, find the exact center of your workpiece that you wish to cut and mark it with a fine pointed pencil. You must align the center of the board with the center of the router bit's cutting area. Different bits may have slightly different shapes, so read the instructions that came with it. But in most cases, the center point is right in the middle of the sloping edge between this point and that point. Mark it by eye with a pencil or a fine sharpie as best as you can. You'll have to accurately align the center line of your workpiece with the center of this bit. But don't worry, this isn't hard. Let's go to the router table. These lock miter bits typically come in two sizes, small and large. Small bits are significantly cheaper, but they only work for stock up to three quarters of an inch thick. The larger version is a little more pricey, but it will do everything a smaller bit will do, plus thicker boards up to an inch and a quarter, which includes the common four quarter hardwood that you may end up using. I'll put a link below this video to the bits I prefer. Set the bit height by eye, trying your best to align the center of the board with the center of the bit as we discussed earlier. Just get it as close as you can at this point. Now tentatively set the fence by placing your workpiece against it and moving the fence forward until the cutter falls just short of the lower corner of the workpiece. In this position, make a test cut about two inches into the end of your workpiece. Then flip it over and do the same to the opposite edge. Remember to dial down the speed of your router if you're using the large version of this bit. Trim the end off, cut it in half, and slip the two pieces together as shown. If the surfaces are flush, your bit is adjusted properly. If they are not even, you adjust your router bit half the distance of the offset and make another test cut. If there is a gap in the seam, as seen here, that means your fence isn't properly set. That's no surprise since we just did it by eye. Once the bit height is dialed in, the fence will be easy. Turn the bit's cutter perpendicular to the fence, pointing it toward your body. Lay the workpiece against the fence and place a metal rule on top of the router table with its edge against the workpiece. Adjust the fence until the bit's cutter barely scrapes the edge of the rule as you turn it. You should just barely feel that scrape. Lock your fence in place, then confirm the position by laying the workpiece on the table and placing the ruler on top, this time its edge against the fence. It should just barely scrape the cutter in this position as well. If the cutter scrapes the rule in one position but not the other, your bit height is not centered and you must double check your adjustments. Otherwise, it's time to make a full length test cut. I like to use double sided tape to attach a straight strip of wood to the edge of the workpiece that I plan to cut. This provides something to ride against the fence as the bit does its work and gives you a cleaner, sharper edge. After running the piece flat on the top of your router table, adjust your feather boards and run your mating workpiece on its edge with the same router bit and fence settings. The result should be a perfectly fitting lock miter joint. And each time you use your bit, the process will get faster and easier. See you next time. The Whiteside family has been making router bits in North Carolina for half a century. Their quality is exceptional. Their service is fantastic. And I like supporting small family businesses. That's why my cabinet is full of Whiteside bits. And I think yours should be too. Check them out at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.